Today we're changing fuel filters on a Packard MX. I'll show you the process for the MX-11 and MX-13 for both pre and post EPA 21 engines. Here we have a 2019 MX-13 and here a 2021 MX-11. We're going to start with the 2019 engine which will cover all MX's back to 2013. In order to do a full fuel filter change we must include the chassis filter or water separator. So we'll go through that process first. This is the Davco style chassis filter where the filter and the ball are on the top. Firstly we'll remove the top cap, keep track of that o-ring, and then find the drain valve located below. This drain has a quarter turn lever on it, so once you turn it to the downward position, fuel will start to run out of the bowl. Be sure you have something to catch the fuel as it spills out. Once the fuel is below the filter level, we can shut off the valve and start filter removal. These Davco filters take a special size wrench for your filter size. Make sure you get the correct one or you'll have some trouble with this. And no, a large set of channel locks is not the proper tool for this job. Spin the locking ring off, then remove the bowl, and then the filter. The new filter assembly should come with new o-rings for the top cap and the bowl. Make sure to replace these to prevent future leaks or a possible air leak entry that will cause you to lose prime. The old filter should have a seal on it here. Let's check to see if it got stuck on the filter base. Yep, there it is. Pry that off so the new filter won't interfere with this old seal. I'll place it back on the old filter here just to keep track of it. Okay, get your new filter and install it downward, giving it a few turns after it seats to help the seal at the bottom settle. We like to have the Fleet Guard logo facing outward as well. Place the new o-ring on the cap and then install it. Push firmly down to make sure that it's flush before threading the locking ring down. We'll use the Davco filter wrench one last time, getting the ring snugged up. Once it has made contact, the specs per Davco are to tighten the locking ring three additional ribs. Install the new o-ring for the top cap and then tighten it by hand until you hear the clicks letting you know that you're done. If you happen to have the Packard chassis filter, it's very similar to the Davco's, just turned upside down. In order to drain this bowl, you'll need to find the drain valve located at the bottom and then turn it lefty-loosey to get the fuel to drain out. With this style, you're going to want to drain the bowl completely before removal. The Packard style chassis filters need their own filter wrench as well. You can find these on Amazon for around $20 or so. Again, no channel locks as they can cause the fuel bowl to crack. If you have a sensor at the bottom of the bowl, make sure you disconnect it at this time. Okay, spin the bowl off and get the filter out of there. There are a couple different designs for the Packard fuel filters, so make sure you get the correct part number for your truck. You can see here that the top cap of each filter is different, and they cannot be interchanged. You can tighten your drain valve now, and then go ahead and replace the o-ring. Install the bowl and the filter up onto the base and then start threading it down. Once the bowl seats on this Packard style filter, the ribs are spaced further apart than the Davco's, so don't try to get three additional tighter after it gets tensioned. Go for one and a half or two instead. Just make sure it's secure and won't leak. Don't forget to reinstall your sensor connector if you have one. Now on to the main engine filter located on the filter module. The filter pulls fuel from the outside and cleans it as it passes through the center. That means all the dirt gets stuck on the outside of the filter. Before you start, you're going to need to pull a vacuum on the filter module to suck all the fuel out of the bowl. If you don't vacuum the fuel down, there's a chance that when you pull the filter out, the dirt will fall into the bowl 
and when you put a new filter in, it will push that dirt down into the low side fuel gallery. This could lead to dirt into the high pressure pumps or the fuel injectors. So you have to vacuum the fuel out until there is only one inch or less remaining at the bottom. To do that, you need a Mighty Vac tool. Any sort of air operated vacuum device will work, but the Mighty Vac is by far the most convenient. You can get these on Amazon as well. The only part you'll need to make is the adapter for the vacuum line to the return fuel line on the engine. The left side of the fuel interface is the return side, and that's the one we need to remove. These are quick disconnect lines, so you just press the clip inward, it will spread, and you can pull the line off. You'll need to transfer that clip over to the line on the Mighty Vac. Then just push the vacuum line up into the interface. Once it's in place, connect shop air to the Mighty Vac and let it start pulling. We'll create an air bleed by loosening the cap on the fuel filter, but not removing it quite yet. Let the vacuum run for a little while until the bucket is mostly full. Then you can shut off the vacuum and start removing the filter. Pull the filter quickly to prevent any contaminants from dropping into the bowl. You can see here that we have about one inch of fuel remaining in the bowl, which is perfect. You could potentially go longer and pull all of it out if you want, but one inch is the minimum. Inside the filter module you'll notice a little white ball sitting in this standpipe. While the filter is out, check to make sure that the ball is still present and not stuck. It should move around easily when you tap it. If you need to access the check ball, just use a flathead to pry up on this black cover. Then pull the white ball out. Using another flathead, you can pry up on the green piece. The purpose of this check ball is to prevent fuel flow if there is no filter installed. The fuel filter has a peg hanging downward that prevents the check ball from seating against that green valve. With no filter, there is nothing preventing the ball from moving, and fuel flow causes the ball to move into the valve opening and seal it off. Check to make sure that the ball is still in good shape and not broken, missing, or lodged into the green valve. If the ball is missing, there's a chance that it broke and made its way down into the fuel gallery, which could damage fuel system components. You can see here that the ball is too large to fit into the opening of the valve. This smaller ball is one we removed from a previous truck. This was too small and it actually got lodged into the valve opening so filter or no, it was always blocking fuel flow. So check your check ball every time you change your fuel filter. Reinstallation is straightforward. Push the green section down firmly until it seats. Place the ball in the slot. Then snap the black cover into place. Okay, grab the old filter and pull it out of the cap. It just pulls straight out. The new filter will come with an o-ring so make sure you replace the one on the cap. Grab the new filter, lube up the bottom seal with clean fuel and install it into the filter module. Twist the filter as you push it down then once you feel it seat twist it a few more times. This will help seal the seat against the intake pipe. Install the cap and make sure you torque it to spec. This will vary from engine to engine, so make sure you look this up for yourself. Once it's torqued, hook the airline back to the Mighty Vac and start pulling fuel into the container. This pulls fuel from the tank and primes the chassis primary filter and the engine secondary filter and removes air from the system all at the same time. You'll need to fill the container, then drain the fuel, then refill it again. A minimum of two full Mighty Vac containers is necessary to prime the fuel system completely. Unhook the air, then remove the line from the Mighty Vac and reinstall the return fuel line you removed earlier. Make sure the clip locks the line into place. 
Once finished, you'll need to manually cycle the hand primer pump. About 20 pumps should do it, or once you feel significant resistance in the pump plunger. Lock it down, then we'll try to start the engine. And that's it. Let it run for five minutes or so just to make sure everything is good. Make sure you check around the filters, primer, and lines for any signs of leakage. If the engine won't start on the first try, use the manual primer pump some more. If it still refuses to start, try using the Mighty Vac a couple more times. You can't prime the engine too much, so do it as much as necessary. So that's how you prime a Packard MX up to the 2021 model year. For EPA 21 engines, the filter module has changed a bit. There is no longer a chassis side filter and it has been moved into the module itself. Here you see the main or secondary fuel filter on the left and the primary fuel filter on the right, once known as the chassis filter. The fuel line orientation is the same. Left line is return and right line is suction. So you would still hook up the Mighty Vac to the left side. There is the new hand primer pump and again the filters. While the Mighty Vac is running, you crack both of these filter caps loose again and let the suction pull all the fuel out of the bowls. The new hand primer pump has a longer stroke, so you shouldn't have as much struggles with it as the previous years have been known to give. Filter removal is straightforward. I'll start with the primary filter, previously known as the chassis side filter. The filter is locked into the cap when you remove it, and you'll need to separate the two. It free spins in the cap, so grab both and pull them apart while twisting slowly. You'll feel the filter pop out just a little bit when it finds the sweet spot. Then you twist the filter to the right while pulling. It's a bit tricky at first, but you'll develop a feel for it. To lock it back into the cap, you twist to the left. Down in the module, you'll see a hole for that dowel on the filter. Make sure that is aligned correctly before tightening the cap. The secondary or main engine fuel filter is removed the same way. Grab, pull, and twist to the right to separate. Again, there is a dowel on the filter, so make sure it is aligned correctly as well before reinstalling. Push the filter into the cap and spin to the left to lock it into place. Align the dowel, then tighten the cap. Make sure you torque them to spec when you're done. This is an MX-13 engine and the fuel filters are pretty clear of the common rail and high pressure lines. The MX-11 has the filters and the high pressure lines very close to each other, so be careful when removing and reinstalling the main filter cap. Once in a while we find that the lines bind with the cap when reinstalling, and since the cap is made of composite material, the threads can strip out. Just something to watch out for so you don't run into unnecessary trouble. This is the process for changing fuel filters on all common MX engines. I hope you found the video informative, and as always, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them down in the comment section.